Today we're going to talk about solving quadratic inequalities. What's the difference in solving quadratic inequalities and solving quadratic equations? How many answers do you get when you solve a quadratic equation? Two, right? How many answers do you get when you solve a quadratic inequality? Whole lot, right? Multiple. Not just one or two, but multiple. All right? <clears throat> so um, whenever we solve equations compared to inequalities, when we solve an inequality, we're going to end up shading. Do you remember that? We've done inequalities a couple times this year already. Now it's time to do quadratic inequalities. Okay? So let's start by filling out this chart on your paper. There's two types of quadratic inequalities that can be solved and graphed. What differences do you notice in the two sample problems? Look at these two sample problems right here. What differences do you notice? Okay, so the num number of variables is the biggest deal. Okay, and as small as a difference as that is, it actually makes a big difference in how you go about solving them. Okay, so let's look at the first example, number one. How many variables does it have? Two. What are those variables? X and why? The nature of the solutions of an inequality that has two variables are the solutions are the ordered pair that make the inequality true. Well, does that make sense? An ordered pair looks like x, y. Isn't that correct? Does it make sense that we have two variables and our answers have to look like x, y? Yes, it should. Okay. The graph of the solution is a It's a shaded region bounded by the uh -huh, graph of the related function. Okay? And here is a sample graph. We're going to be graphing a parabola like we've been doing, and we're either going to shade outside of the parabola like this one is, or we will shade inside of the parabola depending on um, the sign depending on what, what makes the value of this equation, or excuse me, the inequality, true or not. Okay? We always want to shade where it's true. Okay? But then there's problem number two. You told me a moment ago that the difference was the number of variables, right? In these two equations, or inequality, excuse me. How many um, variables does this one have? One. And what is it? It's an x. The solutions to this inequality are the values of x that make the inequality true. It's not an ordered pair anymore because we don't have a y value. We only have an x. The graph of the solution is a, you're on the right track. It's a set of x values bounded by the roots of the related equation. Sometimes people have trouble remembering whether they're supposed to graph it here or graph it here. Well, think about it. If I have two variables, don't I also have two axes? An x-axis and a y-axis? But here, if I only have one variable, don't I only have one axis? Okay, so that's a good way to remember it if that helps you. Okay? Any questions about this so far? Okay, then let's talk about specifically how to solve two variable quadratic inequalities. All right? There's some steps you can follow right here if you're struggling. Read through these. Um, please keep this in mind. When we actually go to draw our parabola, we have to be careful if it's a dotted line or solid line based on the sign the inequality sign that is in the, pr the problem. Okay? So for this particular problem, let's go ahead and decide that right now. Look at the sign and please tell me if this is going to be a dotted line or solid line. Solid. Okay? Now, we could lug our calculator out, go ahead and put it in, but we're not going to do that. 
Okay? We're going to use our calculator to check. We're not going to do use our calculator to do. The reason being is that this is relatively simple to graph because of everything we know about transformations. Everything we know about transformations says, what am I supposed to do first? Go down 18. Okay? After I go down 18, where do I go? To the left 1. Excellent. And that's my vertex, right? Now, a parent function shaped parabola means from the vertex, I go over 1 and up 1 because 1 squared is 1 over 2 and up 4 because 2 squared is 4 and over 3 up 9 because 3 squared is 9. Is this a parent function shaped parabola? No. It has a multiplier of a 2. Does that affect the x or does it affect the y? The y because it's on the same side of the equation and inequality as the x so I can put whatever number I'm going to put in for x but the y value is going to be a multiplied by 2. Does that make sense? Okay. So from the vertex, I can still go over 1. My x value doesn't change, but I can't go up 1. I have to go up twice that far, which is 2. I, can't go, I can go over 2, but not up 4. I need to go twice that far, so I need to go up 8. I can still go over 3, but I'm not going to go up 9, I'm going to go up twice that far, so I'm going to go up 18. Okay? Because see, the other option is to put this in the calculator and go to the table and plot the exact points that we need. When I don't, I, I mean, I'd have to look and say, okay, that's 1, negative 10. I didn't ever find 1, negative 10. I graphed my function based on the transformations and the shape of a of a parent function parabola and the fact knowing the fact that this is not a parent function shape parabola fair enough i also know parabolas are symmetric so i just i don't even need to count i just got to match this side up with that side don't i we already decided that this was a solid line because of the sign the inequality sign that's in the problem so i can just go ahead and draw in my parabola and then I have to shade okay deciding where to shade is really the biggest deal here okay after graphing the parabola obviously which point do I want to choose if I have a choice probably zero zero why do I want to choose zero zero because it's the easiest right because it's the easiest okay that means I have to put in a zero for your, for X right here and I've got to put a zero in for for what except that's a Y let's put air a zero in for X right here and a zero in for Y right here okay so somebody please tell me what zero plus one is one what is one squared one so what's one times two so what is two minus eighteen so 0 is less than or equal to negative 16. Some of you are looking at me like I'm crazy, and some of you are realizing, oh, that's not true. Okay? So this is false. This point right here is false. Do I shade where the f it's false, or do I shade where it's true? I shade where it's true. And because of the properties of inequalities, if this part is false, then what? The other part is true. When we're dealing with quadratics, we're dealing with inside and outside of the parabola. So I know inside is false because my test point was false, so I can shade the outside. Okay? And then we're finished with that one. Any questions about that one? Should I use the the calculator at any point? Oh, I could check, right? So I could put I could put it in there. You remember you got to delete one extra time to delete the equal sign, then it gives you a choice of an inequality sign to choose. And sure enough, does mine look right? Yeah, I drew the parabola and then I shaded on the outside of the parabola. 
okay? Guys, I'm not opposed to you using this, but watch what happens when I press Control-T. There's no functions in there, so there's no table to look at. It doesn't consider inequalities functions. So there's not a table to go and look at in your calculator, and so you won't get the exact points like I'm asking for when you graph inequalities like this, okay? Any questions? Okay. So then there's the other kind. There's the other kind of quadratic inequality, and that's the kind with just one variable. Okay. In most cases, just an x. In some cases, it might be another variable, but that doesn't really matter so much. It's just the fact that there's just one. Okay. It does still matter what kind of sign you have, and we'll get here. We'll get there in a second. We haven't really talked about that in, lately, so we'll go back to that in just a moment. Okay. First of all, I've got to find the roots. I can either graph or I can factor or I can use the quadratic formula, right? Those are my three possibilities. That's the only ones we've talked about, right? You can either graph or factor or use the quadratic formula. Which one would you choose if you were doing number four? Okay, so I heard several people say quadratic formula and I heard several people say factor. Which one's right, quote unquote? Which one's right? Either, okay? You guys know that the quadratic formula will work every time. I told you that yesterday, right? Okay, but some of you have already looked at this and thought to yourself, oh, that's a leading coefficient of one, so if I know what two numbers multiply to be negative 10 and add to be three, I can go straight to my factors. And some of you thought five and two, but then you're like, okay, it has to be positive five and negative two, right? But because of that, I can go straight to my factors of x plus five and x minus two. So if you need to do the quadratic formula on this, please do. I'm not saying this is the only way. You know how I feel about that, okay? But what I am saying is this one's probably easier to factor because those numbers are so simple to see. Okay, so now that I know the roots, excuse me, now that I know the factors, I can find the roots, right? How do I go from factors to roots? Set them equal to zero. So x plus five equals zero and x minus two equals zero. So x equals negative five and x equals positive two. I'm skipping steps, I'm sorry. Let me go back and write them just in case, okay? Any questions about that? Because see, here's the deal. When we solved equations, quadratic equations, we were done at this point, weren't we? Okay, it's not just enough to find the roots when we're solving quadratic inequalities. Now we have to show all of the answers. We have to have a number line. That's not straight, apparently. There, now it's straight. Sorry about that, I'll fix it, okay? I want both of my roots on there, for sure, but I also want wherever zero would be to be on there as well, okay? Because once again, if I have to choose a test point, which test point do you think I would want to use? A zero, okay? So let's choose my zero, and let's put the, the zero back into the original uh, inequality. What's zero squared? Zero plus three times zero, still zero, minus 10. So zero is greater than negative 10. That is true, right? That's true. That means, oh, can we go back just a second? Can we forget we talked about that for just a second? Let's go back to the roots, okay? I forgot to go back up to this chart real quick. Let's go back to the roots. Look at the sign that's in the original problem. It's a greater than sign, right? According to this, we're gonna use open circles for less than and greater than. So on my two roots, on my number line, I need to have open circles on my two roots, okay? Sorry about that. Then we choose zero, zero as a test point. 
Then we substitute it back into our original inequality, and I get 0 is greater than negative 10. And we know that that is true. That means it, that, what is it, wait, what does that mean? That means the correct answers are between 2 and negative 5. Okay? That means everything right here is an answer. Any number between negative 2, excuse me, negative 5 and 2 is an answer, correct? Like 1? Does 1 work? Does 1 make that sentence true? What about negative 4? What about 2? Two squared, what's two squared? Four plus six, what is ten minus ten? Zero is greater than zero. That's not true, is it? Okay, that's why this is colored in. Excuse me, that's why this is open and not colored in, because two is not a solution, but everything in between two and negative five is a solution. So. Don't, don't draw this on your paper. I just need you to see it real fast, okay? What if zero was false? What if this part was false? Then where would the solution be? On the outsides, both outsides, right? How would I prove that? Pick another number, right? Pick another test point, like three. Isn't three on the outside of two? Well, what's three squared? 9 plus 9, 18 minus 10. Well, in this case, it says 0 is greater than 8. Is 0 greater than 8? So I know that that part out there is false, and it shouldn't be colored in, which is what I have, okay? But that's just another situation. There's not an example of that, and I don't want you to be shocked or frightened or something like that if you have one of those on your homework tonight, okay? Any questions? Okay, uh, let's look at number five then, please. A garden is, in, is to be in the shape of a rectangle. The length of the garden must be four meters longer than the width. The gardener wants the area of the garden to be no greater than 480 square meters. Find all possible dimensions. Any idea what we should do first? or what some people like to do first. Draw it, right? Most people want to draw it first, see what it looks like. A rectangular garden, the length of the garden must be four meters longer than the width. If we're getting the measure of the length from the width, how long is the width? X, okay? So if the width is X, then how long is it? x plus 4 because the length must be 4 meters longer than the width, okay? So we're talking about the area of the garden, so how do we find the area of a rectangle? Length times width, so x times x plus 4, and how does that have to relate to 480? Less than or equal to 480. So what do you want to do first? Distribute is a good call. There and there, right? x squared plus 4x is less than or equal to 480. Then what? I need to get everything on the same side. For the last couple of days, we've said we've got to get it equal to zero, right? I know what you mean. I totally know what you mean, okay? But we do have an inequality, so it's not really equal to zero, but again, I know what you mean. I've got to get all my numbers on the same side. So I need x squared plus 4x minus 480 is less than or equal to zero. So how do you want to go about solving this one? Do you know all your factors of 480? Is factoring a good, a good idea here? For some of you, yes. But for some of you, you probably want to use quadratic formula or graph. Yeah? Okay. I happen to know the factors of this one. 
So do you want me to tell you or do you want me to give you a minute to graph it or use the quadratic formula? Okay. See if you can figure it out before I tell you because I'm, I'm giving other people time who are working on a quadratic formula. Okay, so for those of you who haven't seen yet, it's going to be x plus 24 and x minus 20. Okay, x plus 24 and x minus 20. If those are the factors, how do I get to the roots? Equal to 0. x plus 24 equals 0. x minus 20 equals 0. So x equals negative 24 and x equals 20. Am I finished? What do I have to do? I have to graph it, don't I? Okay. So I need to give myself a number line that I did a better job on this time than the last time. Excellent. And I've got negative 24. I've got a positive 20. I'm going to go ahead and put myself a 0 there as well. Okay. So I know my roots are negative 24 and positive 20. Are they open circles or closed circles? How do you know? How do you know they're closed? Because it's less than or equal to, right? Okay. So I've got a closed circle on negative 24 and a closed circle on 20. So it's either going to be between these two values or on the outside of these two values. So let's choose a 0 to substitute in. 0 times 0, sorry, 0 times 4 is what? 0, so 0 is less than or equal to 480. So that is true. So where do I shade? In between. So that means every point between these two numbers will make this inequality true. So can someone please tell me why that this is still not the correct answer? It does say find all possible dimensions. You're on the right track. You would have a width of 0. Can we have a width of 0? What else can I not have a width of? Negatives. Okay. So this answers the inequality. It answers the math. Now I have to answer the question that was asked in the problem. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So let's talk about the width specifically. The width is the x value, right? So what can the width be? Anything between 0 and 20. This is what it looks like. x is going to be between 0 and 20, right? But it has to be greater than 0, and it has to be less than or equal to 20. Why can't it, why can't it be greater than or equal to 0? Again, you can't have 0 as a width. Right? Okay, so what about the length? What does the length have to be compared to the width? Four more. So that means these values should just be four more. That's going to be four, because zero plus four is four. It also, though, cannot be... Uh, can I change this? letter right here. I used x. I really want to use a, a w because that was really the width. Sorry about that. So what should this be right here? A length. And that's going to be less than or equal to 24 because again it's 4 more. Okay. 
So when you have a word problem, it's not just good enough to solve the equation. You have to go back and answer the question that's being asked. And this specifically is asking for length and width. And while something like negative 10 makes the inequality true, it doesn't work in the problem. Okay? So you have to focus on that a little bit. Any questions? Please do number two. Number four. Um, let's say number five, number eight, and number nine. Okay? Any questions? Peace.